What's going on guys, my name is Renegade, today we're here to ask and answer the question, how good is Mindbreaker class? Now before we get into that, my guild in AQW, Perception, is currently recruiting and it will be recruiting for the foreseeable future. So if you are watching this like two or three months after this video has come out, then if you want to join, then by all means try to join anyway. But yeah, the guild is open for anyone and everyone to join. You could be level one and have just started playing the game and I'll let you join as long as your account is of course your main account. Now. If you want to join, then what you got to do is go to the description of this video, find the link to the Discord server, it should just be in there somewhere, and uh, join my Discord server, find my name on the right hand side once you're in my Discord server, and uh, click right click on my name, click message, and send me a personal message, and uh, just leave your name and just say, hey, I want to join your guild, and I'll get back to you and I'll uh, sort out inviting you into the guild. Now, it's pretty, I'm pretty strict on being active within the guild, um, so if you are wondering how to be active or whatever, then I have guidelines and stuff in the description down below. Even so, you probably should just read those anyway if you want to join. But uh, yeah, if you want to join my guild, again, go to the, my Discord server, find my name, send me a message, and just ask to join. That's pretty much it. So first of all, getting into this, we'll talk about enhancements. Now, enhancements is pretty simple. The class recommends that you use wizard enhancements all the abilities are magical, and uh, you know the stats and stuff lean towards a magical type build. So I tried out wizard, but of course, you know, with every class in this game, it's best to try luck as well if you're going to try any other enhancement, um, as luck just sometimes, for some reason, is the best enhancement to use, even on classes like this where everything's magical. But turns out wizard enhancements are better, and you can see the DPS numbers compared there. Uh, wizard enhancements got me 1,459 DPS, and luck enhancements got me 1,284 DPS. As for survivability, um, neither one of the two enhancements showed any real advantage as the heal is a very specific type heal and there's not really much else that you can do about survivability, so there you have it. Weapon range was also very easy. Um, I didn't even do full in-depth testing for weapon range because I, as soon as I pulled out a weapon that wasn't really stable like unarmed or, you know, like a generally just a stable-ish weapon, um, the class's main damage output, which is, comes from its nuke, was doing really, really low damage. And so, therefore, I was getting, like, I went from doing, like, 21 seconds to kill the specific boss I was killing to, like, 35 seconds, even just on, like, a mid-stable weapon. So I was like, well, there's no point doing wasting my time testing this if it's just going to be ridiculously uh, bad on stable or mid-stable weapons. So I just decided to say, you know what? Stable weapons are the way to go. So something like unarmed or, you know, maybe like just a random weapon. You know, most weapons in the game have a, have the same weapon range. Um, and so just generally like the, the stable weapon range is the one to go for. Now on to passives and abilities and how to use them. So your passives are deep insight, mental focus, and mind over matter. You increase your crit by 8%, you increase your damage by 15%, and then your rank 10 is a chance to activate a shield around you which blocks all damage for 5 seconds. It's really rare and it, and it only has like a chance to be activated if you're low on health as well. So I've never ever seen that activated so it's not really meant much point dwelling on the matter. Okay, so your abilities. Your first ability is called Mind Fire and it consumes 15 mana and has a 4 second cooldown. What this ability does is it applies an effect called Brain Fog. Now Brain Fog is really important and so remember that name. Um, but essentially what Brain Fog does is it reduces your haste, the enemy's haste and hit chance by 3% and that stacks up to 6 times and that lasts 10 seconds. So again, Brain Fog reduces the enemy's haste and hit chance by 3%, stacks 6 times, lasts 10 seconds. This ability's cooldown is 4 seconds and it doesn't consume much mana so just stack this as much as you can. Psychic Wave is your next ability. It consumes 15 mana has a 4 second cooldown. This ability is really simple. Um, it just... It, has a chance to be AoE to deal damage to two enemies at once, but we're talking about this, this class's ability to solo, so we won't worry about that. Um, this ability literally just does a bit of damage, and that's it. No effects, no like special stuff that happens, just a bit of damage. Next ability is called Cerebral Siphon. It consumes 20 mana, has a 6 second cooldown. This ability does damage based on stacks of brain fog, which is the first ability stackable thing. Um, but it also heals you for half the difference between your max HP and current HP. What that means is, say you're at 2k HP, and your maximum HP is, is 3k. It'll heal you back up to 2.5k. It's just going to heal you to the halfway point between where you are currently, in terms of health, and your maximum health. So again, if you're in a situation like, I don't know, you're on 100 health and you're, you're fighting a boss and you're about to die, um, if you use this ability, it'll heal you all the way back up to 1.5k if your maximum is 3k. So it's actually quite a good heal. Um, and situations like that, but 
generally like this, abil this ability is uh, quite mana costly and I'll get to that later. Doesn't really look it on the surface but it does really really screw you over so talk about that, talk about that in a sec. Either way, your last ability is called Esper's Might, consumes 20 mana, 10 second cooldown. This is also has a chance to be AoE to two foes, but it's just like, kind of, I mean, it's just, I mean, this class is a soloing class, and I'm, so I'm just gonna disregard that. Um, your damage increases based on stacks of Brain Fog on this ability, and it's kind of like a nuke, so um, you're, you're, you're able to get like 16k crits at level 85, um, as long as you're using a stable weapon. Um, with this, so it's really, really quite a good nuke, and it, it is actually where most of your damage in this ability, in this class, comes from. Um, if we went for this nuke, then this class would be absolutely trash, but, uh, yeah, this nuke ability, Esper's Might, also applies an effect which reduces the enemy's damage output for a short time. Um, you can't, you can't stack that, unfortunately, you can't, um, loop that, rather, unfortunately, but, uh, it's, like, six seconds, I think it lasts, so it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty damn good. Okay. So, a problem that I noticed with this class, and you should probably, you would probably notice this immediately as well, is it has mana issues. So, first things first, to use this class, you need a mana vamp. So, go to slash join museum, go to the first NPC you see there, go to armor of ore, I think the button is called, and then within that sub menu, you can go to the next button, which is called um, ore enhancements, and then go to wizard, and then find the mana vamp wizard enhancement for whatever level is closest to your current level and apply that to your weapon. Now what that mana vamp is going to do is it's going to actually increase the amount of mana regeneration you get. Now even then with mana vamp um, you are still going to have some mana problems so this is how I recommend you you uh, go around about this using this class to get like the most damage possible. So it, it really there's no like combo that I can recommend because it just depends on the situation. Some bosses are gonna like require different combos, and some length of fights are gonna require different stuff. So I'll just give you the facts, and you guys can sort of, I guess, work it out from there. It's really easy to use this class, so it's not too hard. Okay, so first things first, you want to keep Mind Fire applied. You want to keep Brain Fog applied. So whether you want to spam this or not, it's up to you. But what I recommend you do is just apply it every five, six seconds. So just keep like a mental count of just how many seconds have passed, and just sort of apply Mind Fire so brain fog doesn't fade. You don't want brain fog to fade. If brain fog fades, then you want your, your damage is going to be lowered by a lot. Next, apply Esper's Might as much as you can. Now, whether that's going to be spamming it or not, again, it's up to you, but I recommend you just keep keep using Mind Fire and Esper's Might as much as you can. So it's two and five. Even when you don't have six stacks of, my, of, mind, um, of brain fog, keep using Esper's Might because it'll still deal a decent amount of damage and it'll still keep your DPS high. Um, if you start running into mana problems, keep applying Mind Fire and perhaps back off of Esper's Might, but with just that combo right there, 2-5, two, 2-5, five, two, five, you should be fine. But again, you can't really spam it, um, but that's okay because your DPS is still good. If you're if you're good for mana, and if you're at that point, and you've still got mana left, and you want to start using a bit more mana, then you've got one of two options. If the fight is longer, and you're going to need to heal, then use Cerebral Siphon. But in the background gameplay, you should be able to see me killing the Red Dragon. And if you notice with a monster that sort of HP, you literally don't ever need to heal. So literally never touch Cerebral Siphon, because it just consumes too much mana. Um, you could use it if you want like a bit more damage, but generally if you want to use something else apart from two and five use three use psychic wave So what I was doing was, was going two five two five three two five two five three sort of thing Just sort of using three occasionally just to give it a bit of extra damage not really Worthwhile to be honest to use three or four, but you can if you want like it's just an optional thing but just generally use 2 and 5 and heal whenever you need, or use Psychic Wave whenever you want. It's up to you. Really, really easy to use this class. All you need to remember, 2 is your stack. Keep that active. 3, damage. Literally all it is. 4, heal. 5, nuke. So, so easy to use this class. Very, very easy. So on to my opinion. What, what do I think of this class? So... First of all, Mindbreaker is an average soloing class. It's not really bad, I'd say, but it's not that great either. Its DPS is, is actually pretty okay. Like, it's it's in the realm of, like, classes like um, Arch Paladin and Legion Doom Knight and those, but it's sort of not really up there with, like, Lightcaster and Void Highlord and stuff, but it sort of gets close, I guess. So it's it's in the the league of those classes, so it's actually kind of impressive for how old it is, oh, old it is. and it's probably going to actually get a buff. I'd rec I'd, I wouldn't really see AE leaving this class like it, it is now for 
very long, you know what I mean? Like, Mindbreaker, you need to purchase 12 KACs, and you need to be, have a, be, be a member. And, uh, like, those two requirements cost a lot of money. And so I'd, I'd, I'd be surprised if they left Mindbreaker like it is for very long. They might buff it after the Silvery Rite, I don't know. Either way, um, it's an okay soloing class. If you've got it and you want to use it, then by all means, but, like, classes like Legion Doom Knight, Arch Paladin, Lightcaster, Void High Lord, even classes like Artifact Hunter, probably not Card Clasher, um, but classes like that are just better, I'd, I'd say. Um, one advantage with this class is it's very easy to use. So it means that you can actually just sort of sit there in a room and talk to people while you're soloing stuff and it doesn't actually matter, or while you're fighting stuff. Um, so that's actually an option for you if you want that. It's also, like, I think one of the only soloing classes that you can fight AoE at the same time as soloing. So if you are interested in, like, killing a boss that has, like, other monsters around it, then I guess that's a this is a class you can use um, to kill the other monsters as well. Um, but just generally, that last nuke ability as well is really, really cool. It's a 16k crit when you've got full stacks of brain fog, so it's actually really cool and satisfying to use. It's a pretty satisfying class to use, and I, I quite like it, to be honest. I think the whole mana problem thing is actually a good thing. I think having a class like Blazebinder, again, I always go back to Blazebinder in these How Good Is videos, but Blazebinder, I fucking hate it, but... Um, Blaze Banner, how that works is you do literally just button mash. No combo, no nothing. You just button mash until the monsters are dead. So boring. Never run out of mana, never run out of health. You're always just killing stuff, and it's really fucking powerful, right? This class, you can't button mash because you run out of mana, so you actually kind of have to think about what you're doing a little bit. Sometimes a situation might happen where, like, hey, I'm running out of mana because I, like, missed a crit once. Now, that's bad, but it's also kind of, like, fun, almost. It kind of makes it a bit more engaging than just button mashing. Now I know Blazebinder, I made that comparison and Blazebinder is a farming class and this is a Solomon class, but just generally this class is more engaging than something like Lightcaster even, or Legion Doom Knight, or those sorts of classes. It's actually kind of more engaging. Don't get me wrong though, it's pretty average. It's not bad. Someone on my Discord server yesterday, I won't name names, and I, I said to him that I'm going to prove him wrong in the video. Um, he said that uh, this class is terrible. It's like one of the worst in the game. It's definitely not one of the worst in the game. Definitely not. There are classes like Rust Bucket. There are classes like, you know, um, Renegade class. No, um, <laughs> actually, Renegade class is pretty bad for this as well. Um, like classes like Assassin and, you know, Beast Warrior and Beast Master and Berserker and stuff that are really, really bad. This is nowhere near that sort of level of, of bad. This is just average. So... I mean, if, if you've purchased 12 KCs and you're a member and you don't have any other options, then this is this is a good class for you. If you want to use a big nuke and not really have to um, not really have to do much, then this is a class for you. If you want something that's a, just a bit of a challenge and sometimes puts you in situations like that, then uh, this is the class for you. But if you want something really, really fast, really, really effective, and, uh, I don't know, really, really engaging, then this is not the class for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.